In a recent video, I explained how self works in Python classes. I explained what self is and um, why, for example, you need to specify self as the first parameter in a class, but you don't need to pass it when you call that method. So I explained how it works, but um, I felt there were some questions after this video and I thought, why not create the class mechanism myself? So what I will do in this video is I will create a class and with one method in it and then use the class and then I will recreate that same class without classes. So we will act as if Python does not have classes. And there it becomes very clear why you need this self as the first parameter. So let me start. I'll create a class called employee and it takes a first name and a last name. So I need a class initializer. And in the initializer, I will store the first and the last name. I will create a second method called get full name. The get full name gets self as the only parameter. And in this method, I will return the first name plus the last name. Let me create an F string for this. So I'll create an employee. And I will print the full name. So let me test this code. So when I execute the code, we see that we get the full name. Well, I was going to explain how this self works. We have self here as the first parameter and we have self here in the get full name method as the only parameter. So we know that each method in a class takes self as the first parameter. Now let's recreate this code and act like Python did not have classes. So what I will do is I will create a function called create employee and this function will create an employee object. I will force this function to take a first name and last name. So now we need to store the first name and the last name in something and what we do here is that we will go we will use a dictionary for this a dictionary um, of course has a uh, can map keys to values and that's what i'm going to use to store the first name and the last name so i'll create a dictionary and in the dictionary i will um, store key first name with value first name and key last name with value last name and then i'll just return this dictionary so this is function that creates an object the object is a dictionary with first name and last name okay let me create an employee so I'll say E is create employee Vera Schmidt. And let's see if this works before I continue. 
Yes, that works. So I create an object, which is a dictionary, and it has the first name and the last name. But what I want is that in this line six, I could do something like get full name. Well, how do we do that? Well, for this, first, we need to create a function. The function is called get full name. And here's the question. The get full name, what does it take? Well, it does not take a first name and a last name. It will just take our employee object. So let's call it employee. And what it returns is, I'll return an F string again. It will return employee.firstName and employee.lastName. Okay, so now we have a regular function get full name with one parameter called employee. Now, what I need to do is we need to tell our employee object that it also has this method, this function, which will be a method when we add it to the class. So um, how will I do this? Let's just for now force it to uh, be passed when we create the object. So I will call this the get full name function. And what I will do here is I will add another um, uh, attribute called get full name. And the value will be the get full name function. Okay. So now I create an object an employee object with a first name, last name, and a reference to the get full name function. So of course, I need to pass that function, get full name, and there you go. So at this point, I can indeed make a reference to E square brackets get full name, which will give me the function that I need. But here, what I need to do is this function, it takes the employee object. So what I need to do is I need to pass E here. So let me make sure this works. I'm going to save the code and it doesn't work. What did I do wrong? Dictionary has no attribute first name. Um, Ah, yeah, of course, I'm using the class syntax. So this, of course, needs to be a subscriptable syntax or index syntax, whatever you want to call it. Ah, this will not work. Also, let me make these into single quotes. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to try it again. And now it works again. So right now, I am using the get full name here in, in line nine. I'm making a reference to the get full name attribute and which will return a function and I call it with E. Now, in my last video, I showed you how Python does this trick where you don't need to pass this E here because Python will do that for you under the hood. I'm not going to explain that again here. Um, but what I want to show you here is the following thing. So we started with this question, what is self? And here it is, because watch when I turn this variable here into self. And of course, I have to make this self, I have to make this self. And now I'm going to run the code again. It still works, of course. So this is how this mechanism works. Functions, methods and classes are just functions that are defined in the class. And whenever you call them, Python will look them up in the class, but they need to pass an instance of the object, which then will be in the parameter self. You can give self any name you want, but a convention in Python is that you call it self. So 
Together with my last video on this channel, I hope this explains more about how self works in Python. Till the next time.